Let's go! Stock up, stock down. We're going to get to Durante Jones in just a second. My honest thoughts on what was a pretty bad season opening performance. But we'll get to Durante in a second. Stock down, starting off here with Ali Gay. Uh, Look, this was the most hyped LSU defensive lineman in quite some time leading into a year. And he was just not effective against UCLA. In fact, the offensive tackles ate up B.J. Ojolari as well. I thought Andre Anthony was hot and cold. There was a few drives where he was really disruptive. But the 4-3 defensive front just in general was just blocked way too easy. Now, once again, this was a really good UCLA line. Uh, they're very experienced. Chip Kelly mixes up the play calls. Some of that is scheme. You know, I didn't think LSU did enough to help out that front four. Sometimes you can get pressure on these quarterbacks now, and it doesn't matter. And look, LSU led the SEC last year, was one of the best defenses in the SEC in pressure rate, tackle for loss percentage, havoc, all these different things, and their defense still was bad. So LSU went into this game thinking that a traditional four-man rush was going to work, and it does from time to time. The issue is that even when it did work last year for LSU, their defenses still got torched, and they thought running that same exact concept, that same exact philosophy, that same exact identity would, would work in 2021 it is lunacy. So a lot of that actually falls on Ed Orgeron as well. But overall, the defensive ends for LSU really struggled to generate pressure. Stock up, ugh, this is easy, Mason Smith, my goodness gracious. And, and it's kind of sad because on his pressures, it actually generated sacks and tackles for loss for people not named Mason Smith. He was incredible, and I understand that he was highly hyped going into it. Five-star, rivals, the number one player in the country, that big number zero, and he lived up to it. Uh, He, in fact, exceeded it for me. Um, On twists, loops, anything you want to call it, when he was one-on-one, he was just dominant. He opened up opportunities for other guys to make plays. Mason Smith, you got to go back and watch all our film studies to really appreciate how good his debut performance actually was. He was all of that and more, and you got to play him more. You just simply do. He would stock up is Mike Jones. He didn't even play, and why? (laughs) I understand that he might not know the new defense, but based on how simple the defense is, what's there to learn? I mean, it was a middle school defensive game plan, and he is... LSU's best coverage linebacker, but they decided to stick with Bug Strong, who struggled, Damon Clark, who struggled, and Micah Baskerville, who also struggled. The communication was bad. Uh, the communication on passing routes were bad. Uh, the linebacker placement in and of itself was also bad. And Blake Baker said that he was going to fix the technique issues that the linebackers had last year. So stock up. Obviously, Eli Ricks. I mean, this was another dominant interception performance. He blew one coverage early in the game, but outside of that, he was dominant. I thought, I'm not going to give a stock down to Derek Stingley. It is interesting that he did miss that tackle there at the end, and he did get beat badly by the slot receiver. Maybe he thought he had more help, but we need him to lock him down in that spot and make that tackle. He did neither. Once again, in our film study, we showed you that he did get pancaked really bad on his head on UCLA's touchdown before that, but still, uh, he's got to be better. Also, a stock up is Jay Ward because the LSU safety room just fell apart after he was uh, truck-sticked out of the game early in the game. Uh, LSU's got a safety issue, and if Jay Ward can't stay healthy, they're going to get torched a lot this year. And I know... A stock down, an easy stock down, would be Jordan Tolles, Major Burns, and uh, Todd Harris. They weren't great. (laughs) They missed some critical tackles that we needed them to make. Um, But the safety placement's got to be better. I understand I'm not a defensive coordinator, okay? But a big issue LSU had last year was their safety placement. They bring them too close to the line of scrimmage, which 
actually makes it harder for you to read the game and it actually opens up tons of spaces for really elite offensive coordinators like Chip Kelly to take advantage of. That is exactly what happened on the 75-yard touchdown. So I'm going to give this inexperienced and overall not really talented safety room a pass outside of Jay Ward because we get to obviously uh, the elephant in the room, Durante Jones, stock up or stock down. It's It's got to be stock down, but I, I am a little worried about a few things. Now, the first is I, I don't think Durante Jones thought that defensive game plan was actually going to work. None of it really made sense, okay? You, any defensive coordinator that thinks you can just play one high man under defense against uh, an offensive coordinator like like Chip Kelly, who is known for crossing routes, I just simply don't believe that that was his game plan. Once again, this is just speculation on my part. I would like Ed Orgeron to be asked about this directly. I, I am very curious to see how much Ed Orgeron had a role in this defensive game plan. I... Uh, Once again, we don't have a whole lot of sample from Durante's play-calling experience days, but I just think he's too smart to to think that this was going to work. Um, I'm not sure if he even wants to run this type of 4-3 defense with four static linemen. And when I mean static linemen, it's when you look at the LSU defense pre-snap, you could figure out where everyone's going to go. And when you can do that, experienced quarterbacks like DTR are going to pick you apart. That's part of the reason why he was able to complete such easy passes. Just by showing exotic looks looks or or blitzes from different angles, you're going to get a few incompletions and even interceptions from quarterbacks. But that just doesn't simply happen. And... You go back to the the most famous LSU play on defense last year, the Eli Ricks pick six against Florida. That was actually an exotic coverage. It was a it was a box coverage uh, where you know the slot corner is essentially playing a a robber zone per se. Quarterbacks are too good. They're going to read what you're going to do, and to think that man coverage underneath against an offensive coordinator whose favorite play is Y cross. Once again, I'm not a defensive coordinator. I'm not a schematics uh, sharp. There are people on Twitter who are. I, I, I don't claim to be. I know we do a bunch of film studies and I really break it down deep. I know when bad is bad and that was really, really, really bad. So, stock down is Durante Jones. It was a rude awakening for your first game as a defensive coordinator. Once again, it it is just one game, but it is pretty simple logic uh, going into a Chip Kelly game. Chip Kelly, who has put mesh concepts on tape, the same Chip Kelly who is notorious for running Y cross, which was the route that kept killing Ed Orgeron's defense this past weekend. The fact that you went into the game. It, it was essentially the same philosophy behind the Mississippi State game. You have got to, at some point, do something different. You have got to make DTR look at something different, something more exotic, as we mentioned plenty of times. It, it just didn't make any sense. And really the biggest stock down is Ed Orgeron because ultimately this was his hire. Uh, not only Jake Peets, but Durante Jones and a lot of the young coaches on the staff, and they just, quite frankly, didn't do a good job adjusting. And I shared a conversation I had with a, a defensive coordinator uh, not too long ago about third quarter adjustments. And I always go back to our third quarter video um, about how in eight of LSU's last 11 games, they had atrocious third quarters and really bad early fourth quarters. LSU is not a good halftime team. They're not a good adjusting team. And some of that is pregame preparation. LSU needs to understand one basic philosophical concept. You can't show these quarterbacks and these offensive coordinators these same defensive schemes you showed in the first half of games, especially when they are as simple as man underneath coverage. It just, these quarterbacks, these wide receivers, whether it's, 
the rise of seven on seven or the rules all favoring the offense, it's not good enough. Uh, so not only in-game preparations, but pre-game preparing uh, for a, a four-quarter game has been really bad under Ed Orgeron. Also, um, it, it was ironic. It, it was actually at a booster club uh, meeting about a month or so ago when Ed Orgeron was asked about the 4-3 defense. He said he won four of five national championships with that defense or something like that. Well, his last defense was a 3-4 defense. It was Dave Aranda's defense. Um, and we're going to do a, a recruiting deep dive on 3-4, 4-3. UCLA actually runs a, a variation of a four-man front as well. It's just I, I, the traditional four-man front, the way that LSU does it, it does hamstring what you can do defensively in a lot of different ways. And Ed Orgeron was very insistent on running that type of defense again. Um, and and you saw that the, the, the pass rush, when it doesn't get home, or even when it does get home, if your coverage on the back end is so bad, these quarterbacks evade rush. They get the ball out of their hands so much quicker now than they used to. Uh, it, it's just not as effective as it once was. So, you know, overall, this defensive staff from top down, um, whether it's Durante Jones or Corey Raymond or Ed Orgeron or whoever, Andre Carter, Blake Baker, it was it was not good at all. And the fact that no one in the building has, has I hope someone has suggested that LSU mix things up a little bit. Uh, until they do that, it, it's, it's a team effort. This is Durante's first year as a Power 5 defensive coordinator, so you do give him some slack. But I'll tell you this, in uh, what is it? Nine out of the last 11 games LSU has played, they have given up over seven yards per play. In the 41 games prior to that, they had only given up three games uh, of seven yards per play or more. That is a per play efficiency basis, and that obviously is not good at all. So hopefully that changes. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, another technical thing was. UCLA averaged so much more on pre-snap motion. They averaged over 90 yards per play on pre-snap motion and non-pre-snap motion plays. It was actually under seven. So pre-snap motion is something else LSU needs to work on. Shout out to my guy, Chris Osgood, for that stat. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think of today's video. It is Power Hour LSU. Boom! Uh, yeah, give Durante some time. Don't label him a failure just yet. Let's hope things get turned around. Let's do it, guys. Come on, let's go. Uh, I think we're doing burgers tonight. Let's go.